Okay, today I am going to show you how to do the dodging and burning technique for skin softening uh, or for skin retouching uh, using Photoshop. Um, this is a, you might have already heard about this technique. It is essentially um, using lights and shadows to create the illusion of a smooth surface and in these cases the, the skin. Um, there are many ways of, of doing it, there's many ways of approaching it and, and different preferences that oh, people prefer to do it one way or another. I'm going to show you the way I do it and maybe if I have time I'll show you the other techniques but um, the essence will remain the same regardless of which technique you use. The, the reasons why we do it, it's, it's the same. And um, as you know, if you have watched my videos before or if you have um, heard me or, or, or listened to me talk in, in person, you know, I like to explain the why of things, especially when it comes to Photoshop, um, because I am not a big fan of the, you know, the mentality of the quick and dirty, you know, one click or few click tricks uh, that uh, so many people tend to teach or to be drawn to because I feel that that doesn't teach you any any critical thinking. Um, so I'm going to explain the why of, of this technique, why it works. Um, in my view is that uh, Photoshop, although it is a very complex tool, a, a tool that um, it's, how do I say this? Um, to many people, it, it, it intimidates them when they see all these different panels and options and stuff like that. And the reason why that is because it is in fact a very complex tool because, but the reason why it's a complex tool is because it's used by many, many different industries. I mean, it has some forensics, it has some mathematical calculations, it's used by web designers, graphic designers, photographers, retouchers. But if, if you think about what we use Photoshop for, if you're only a retoucher, if you're only a photographer, you're going to be using the same probably five or six tools all over again. And part of the reason why I like teaching the why of things and not just the how is because once you understand these tools, the, really the, the creativity when it comes to Photoshop, it comes from finding different ways of using the same tools in a way that wasn't thought of before or that not a lot of people use that might benefit you, make, it, make you work either faster or, or, or more efficient. Um, so explaining how this works, it's almost as, as important or as important as explaining, you, you know, the why. So uh, I'm going to move out of this photo just to show you the, the mentality behind uh, dodging and burning, especially for those who are fairly new to this concept. So um, uh, uh, this is, for example, a photo of Yosemite Park. And the reason why we see all these, let's focus on this area right here. Uh, the reason why we see all these different, you know, roughness in the rocks is one, because it's there, but it's also because of how the light is hitting, uh, you know, the rocks and, and it's a, it's hard light is, is light from the sun. Uh, it's, there are not that many clouds diffusing the light. So it's hitting the, this little mountain, uh, on from a side with a very hard light and that creates very hard shadows. And those shadows are there to, you know, the, they show the roughness of the surface by having a contrast between light and shadow. So if we didn't have that, if we didn't have that this many contrasts, all of these areas right here will be, the shadow will be diffused or, or if we were able to remove the shadow, the surface will look smoother because you know, that's it's the light, the location of the light is what defines the three dimensional form of, of this, you know, part of the of this mountain. Uh, and the same concept, we are going to apply it to skin on a on a macro level. So let's just pretend for a little while that uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, like the side of a face. I'm going to use my mouse for this. And instead of a mountain, now we have something like a pimple. All right. And so this is the side of the face and we have the light source hitting it from one side and this light, this side is going to be illuminated and this side is going to be in shadow. All right. And now if we look at that, now we're viewing it from the sides, it will, from the side, if we look at from above, from on top, um, we're going to have pretty much the same effect we're, without changing the light source. We're just changing our position of, of where we're looking at from 
from on top we will see this side that is brighter and this side that is darker so uh, with dodging and burning if we can bring this side up in brightness and if we can bring this side down in brightness we will reduce essentially reduce the effect of what the lighting is 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 of how the lighting is bouncing onto that piece of skin um so it, it that's essentially what what we what we do when we do dodging and burning and the reason why we do this uh, and why these might be better sometimes it might be slower sometimes it's actually faster than doing the the standard tools that you might use in a non i say in a non you know high quality standard type of, of quicker um retouching work the reason why we do this is because by just focusing on the light we leave the texture alone and sometimes the texture needs to be left alone because the issue because when we use the healing brush brush or the clone brush um, we uh, fix this by also messing up with the texture so the way that the the healing or the clone tool work is we will probably sample from an area right here that doesn't have this issue with the highlights and the shadows and we will copy it there but we are also bringing in the texture so it's mixing in the colors that is in this area and mi mixing in the texture that it's in this area and trying to merge it into what's in this area and that's what if it's severe enough or if we do it enough times you that's when you will get those blotchiness um those blotchy areas or those blotchy looking unprofessional skin retouching work um so by doing dodging and burning we we avoid that in a way um that is uh, extremely effective and also sometimes we don't even need to fix that sometimes it's not as hard as a pimple sometimes it's just the nature of how skin works how it it's attached to either the bone or, or some you know underneath the skin that doesn't need uh the strength and all the power of the healing brush tool or or the cloning tool mm. So we're gonna use these photos as an example. This photo has already been uh, retouched when it comes to like small pimples and stuff like that and color corrected. So we're only gonna focus on dodging and burning. The way we're gonna do it is we're gonna use curves layers, we're gonna use masks, and we're gonna be messing with the flow and opacity of the brush tool. And we're gonna use a regular brush tool. So you essentially, those are the only three things you need to know. And I think I have videos on all of them. So oh, again, we're gonna use in the cur we're gonna be using the curves method and other there are other methods. Uh, we're gonna be using masks to uh, painting the effect, and we're gonna painting the effect of being helped with knowing how flow and opacity works on the regular, um, on the regular um, brush tool. So, anyways, uh, we're gonna start by creating a curves adjustment layer, and uh, one curves adjustment layer is gonna be for the for painting in the highlights and one is going to be for painting in the shadows so painting in the highlights that's what's called dodging so we're going to go up in here to a place where it's comfortable enough for you and I, I usually go until there's still some sort of texture even on the on the highest highlights and then we're going to invert the mask because we're going to be painting in the effect gradually and manually and only on those areas that we need to so it's easier to start on an empty mask and painting it in. So uh, we're gonna press uh, Control or Command I, making sure that the layer mask is selected and not just the layer. There's a small difference in here. So now we hide the effect and let's name the layer just for the sake of being, you know, organized. And we call this dodge. Now, if you know how to use actions, this will be a good time to record this as an action, not for the painting, but just for the setting up of the layers. And which I actually have, but I'm gonna do this manually for the purpose of this video. Okay, now we're gonna create another curves layer and this will be for the burning. And I'm gonna drag the curves now down and make this darker. And again, it's pretty much it's the same principle as long as there's still some detail in the darkest shadows. And we're gonna, sorry, um, we're gonna invert the layer and let's call this burn. 
I'm going to group these together just in case, uh, you know, I want to look at the before and after. I'm going to do it quickly. And I'm going to name this DNB. And now we have our layers or basic setup for starting to, you know, dodging and burning. Um, another thing that I do when I'm, when I'm working with skin is I remove all of the, I temporarily remove all of the color away from the photograph. The reason why we do that is because some colors, you know, they're tricky because, because of how our brain is trained to think that a yellow is brighter than a blue. When in reality, if we look at the numbers, they might be the same and that affects the way we see the image. It's a distraction. It's an optical illusion. Uh, it's a variable that we don't really need at this moment. And also, if we use uh, something like a, a black and white adjustment layer or, you know, brightness and contrast layers to soft light or something like that, um, when we make the black and white transformation, we can make the the skin darker or, or the or the textures a little bit more contrasty to make them pop out. So it, it not only removes the distraction of the color, it actually helps. Um, it helps us see the textures better, the textures that we need to fix. So I usually start with a basic black and white adjustment layer, and then any, any type of adjustment layer doesn't really matter, uh, like brightness and contrast, and changing this to something like soft light or Overlay, I don't know. Um, multiply, yeah, there you go. So um, any adjustment layer set to multiply will have this effect, and a black and white adjustment layer just to reduce the color. And now we can see a little bit better the, the small textures on the small, not not even textures, but like you know the shadow area that look a little bit patchy, the shadowy highlight area that look patchy that we need to fix to make the skin appear as though it is smoother than it actually is. Um, so I think we can start right now, uh, but let me just show you in case I forget later, because I'm recording this live. So this is not, uh, I'm working it as, as we go. This this is not pre-recorded. Uh, so any mistakes I make, I'm going to make them live and then I'm going to correct them. And so I might forget a few things. So before I do, um, if, we, if we have the black and white adjustment layer, um, we can uh, change the reds and the yellows opacity or I mean uh, luminosity and this gives us a little bit better you know right now I don't care about the flowers I don't care about anything else but this gives us a little bit better overview of how the skin looks and you know we can make it brighter so that it's not as dark as it is and now we are purposely making the photo look worse so that we can work in it and make it look better okay uh, so now that we have a basic uh, we can reduce the opacity of this. You, you can you can do this black and white as whichever way you want. Um, just know that it's a good tool to have to one remove the color information and second to be able to make those textures pop up so that we can fix them easier. Um, and we can group these layers together too, just so that they're easy to to turn off when we don't need them anymore. Okay, so now we're gonna start with the dodge layer and we're going to be painting in on the mask. So oh, the white brush will always make the effect of whatever layer we're using. It's going to make the effect appear. So in this case, the white is going to make, as long as we have the dodge layer selected, the white brush is going to make the image brighter. And when we go to the burn layer, the same white brush is going to make the image darker because we are using the white brush not to paint white but to paint the effect of the layer. And the effect of the layer is to make it darker. It might seem confusing at first, but um, just don't overthink it. But anyways, I think I have a video on masking where I explain this a little bit better. I don't want to make this video longer than it needs to be. Anyway, so let's begin. Um, so there are also, so I forgot to say something. There are basically three schools of thought when it comes to dodging and burning. One will be, let's say, the middle ground, where we're working on medium-sized paint strokes. Um, so it's fixing the general areas like, oh, let me make a, a brush that I can mark. So for example, in here, where it looks a little bit blotchy, we're gonna be you know, dodging and burning these areas. This right here, this, the darkening under the eyes, there's some of these little 
dark spots right here some of the bright spots right here so that will be like the middle of the road of dodging and burning then there is the uh, pixel level dodging and burning that's when you zoom in really really close more than 100 percent probably 200 300 400 and you go in and you go paint in the little small areas right here and you paint to dark the white the um you paint it with well, with light we add more light to this and that is to remove you know all the little wrinkles and stuff like that i don't use that a lot um and i don't expect people who are watching this video to use it a lot but it's a it's a great tool to have and to understand because there's going to be situations where uh, the regular you know healing brush the clone brush tool won't help you because you're close to an edge and it's trying to the computer is not as smart as you think and it's trying to make an average and it, it grabs the hair or it, or it grabs the background and then all of a sudden your skin is now not only blotchy and without texture but it's also green or red or you know any other way you know the limitations of those of those tools so that's an important tool to have in those extreme situations where you might need it even though you are not planning on using it always all the time and then there's the a third way of, of using dodging and burning which is to create more definition because after all this is a two-dimensional image um a, a, a being this is a three-dimensional space being represented by a two-dimensional image so uh, we might use it to enhance some of the shadows enhance some of the highlights make the eyes pop you know um make it uh, you know fix some a, a little bit of the of the eyebrow make put some highlights on the hair stuff like that um so that's the broader brush and then the one that we use mainly which is this middle of the road and then the really really tiny one which is the pixel level level um you know attention to detail so um we're gonna first uh, i usually start with the one that's on the middle of the road and then we go from there and the technique is essentially the same is just i change my tool presets a little bit different to work either faster or slower um and again you might have to reference to either my video or someone else's video on on flow and opacity because this is when we start you know getting into that so um just real quick if you know if, if i can explain this uh, fast or whatever um flow is how fast you can get to a the, to the level of, of the brush that you have um, without having to painting again and again and again uh, the, the 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 paint stroke and opacity is is going to be your limit on how on where you you on where you're painting you're building up of that effect stops so that's pretty much how I like to think about it. I like to think about flow as how fast is my brush gonna get from zero to 100 in this case, you know, from black to white or, or from, you know, not white, not painting anything to actually painting 100% white. And the opacity will be the limit of when is that gonna stop. So opacity will be the ceiling that the flow is trying to reach when we work with flow and opacity together. So I usually start with probably like a 50% opacity, something like that, and a 1% or 2% flow. Um, if you feel like you're not getting good results, you, especially when you're, if you're a beginning, if, if you're a beginner, uh, try starting to work slower, and that will help you. It's it, and then it's gonna get to a point where it's frustrating, where you want the effect and 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 it's not as fast as you are now because you're better. That's when you want the when your settings start lim limiting you in how fast you're working that's when you know you're getting better and that's when it starts suggesting going up in, in either opacity or flow but even now i still keep my flow really low and my opacity on the higher end you know between 30 to 80 um, percent i start with 50 and i see where i go from there also the 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 way the photo was captured will extremely will affect the how quickly you the, the effect is being applied I have noticed that so a photo that has more contrast um will you will notice that the effect is being painted in quicker than a photo that hasn't even though the numbers might be the same um, that's just because of the nature of how you know the dynamic range of the 
of the photograph is. So anyways, let's start and I am not going to speed this process up. Uh, I'm just gonna paint this, I'm gonna paint this in real time and you are probably not going to see a lot of difference until I turn you know, the, the layers on and off and then you'll start seeing you know, what, what we're actually doing. So um, just this, this requires a lot of patience. I usually have music playing or, or a lecture playing in the background while I'm doing this. Um, because if it might, if you're trying to get that high quality level, high end level, it, it, it takes a, it takes some time. And especially when you're practicing, um, when, when you're practicing and, you, and you're just starting, it's going, it's going to take some time getting used to this. Um, but I, I will also make the argument that once you are good enough, or uh, once you have enough practice, it will get to a point where even doing this will be faster than trying to do everything with a healing brush, trying to do everything with a clump brush, and then spending 60 to 80 percent of the time that you're doing that fixing what that brush uh, messed up in the beginning because again we, we, it's messing up with textures and it's messing up with colors when it doesn't need to be messing with those but that's the nature of how those tools work um also don't think uh, don't reach the wrong conclusion that i never use those tools in this particular photo i have already used those tools but that's not part of this tutorial so i have already used the cloning and healing to do the small pimples or the or the very unique cases where that will be better. But um, to see, for example, if someone can um, identify the, the problems that we have in here, like these you know, little darker spots, and they try to use the healing brush tool, that's not what that uh, brush tool is best for. It's the brush tool is best for, I mean, the, the healing brush tool or the clone tool, those are best for uh, targeted, um, you know, very defined, you know, pimples or, or, or differences in the texture. It's not for this very nuanced and, um, you know, not so obvious uh, variations in the, in the, in the uh, light or the shadow areas of the skin. So if I try to do this, what I'm doing by, um, by using the healing and brush, uh, the healing brush tool, um, essentially, I'm shooting myself in the foot because I'm going to spend a lot of time fixing the, the issues that it caused that didn't need to be raised to begin with. So yes, it uh, this technique might uh, sound like it's just um, not as practical as what you're used to, uh, but once you reach that that threshold, that that level where you're getting enough practice, you will find that um, it, it it's just faster and it's just better to do it this way. There have been times where I've been hired to do something, and the and the uh, you know the photographer says, "Oh, you don't need to do dodging and burning. You just need to do you know the the clean the uh, you know the cloning and the healing." And I know what what but they mean what by that one is that uh, they have a smaller budget and and they don't want me to spend that much time. And second is that they don't feel like you know I don't want you to retouch too much. So I understand that, but um, I have noticed that. I end up still using dodging and burning just because it's better, because it's it's faster than doing it, you know, the other way. And even if I'm only doing, you know, very extremely basic, you know, corporate headshots where I only need to do it for for a little bit and it's not like a, like a beauty shot where I need to get really, really anal about it. Um, so... So yeah, um, I, I think once once people get practice, they, they lose their fear of, of using these techniques. And the problem of doing this on video and doing this in real time is that I have to keep talking. And also it's, it, it's taking me, I, I probably say this on every video where I do it live, it's taking me longer because I have to explain it. Like uh, I, if I didn't have to explain it, if I was just going by myself, um, I would have already been almost halfway through this and I so yeah I, I and also I, I usually only spend about probably 20 minutes um, that's for my work because I, I'm, I'm not into the um, 
super, super high in retouching myself. One, because I am not at that level. I am not that good. I am not the best at this technique. I am not the best at anything at Photoshop related. Um, so that's one reason why I don't oh, do it because I don't want to overdo it and make it look worse. And another is just, you know, it's just not my, it's not my style. Um, so let's see if you can already see a difference. Yeah, so I hope that you're able to at least begin to see um, small changes in in the skin and we haven't touched any of the textures. The textures remain the same and yet the skin looks a little bit softer. At least I hope that you can see it. So I, uh, when I'm doing dodging and burning, I probably do 90% dodging. 90% adding highlights and uh, not so much time on the shadows. Um, I, I It probably should not be that way. That's probably, you know, some la something lazy part of me where I fix all the imperfections with dodging. Um, I mean, yeah, with dodging. And then if I feel that I made the image too flat by doing that, then I go come with the with the burn tool and and give it back its, uh, its definition like like I explained at the beginning on that the third use of the dodging and burning technique um, and part of it is that the action that I created um, the reason why I don't like sharing it is because it's not a pretty good action and the uh, burning tool is it's far stronger the, the way I, I set up the curve it's it's stronger than the than the dodging so it kind of it throws me off a little bit because I'm um, I'm getting used to how quickly I I'm fixing it things with the uh, with the Dutch turn and then it throws me off when I have to pretty much get used to how the my dodging preset does it my I mean my burning preset does it so I might share that um, action but it's it's not the best one and if you know at least you know a few things about creating actions you should be able to create your own action so that you don't have to create all these layers manually and that's that's really the the only the only um, things that I use actions for. I, I'm not like I said at the beginning, or maybe it was implied at the beginning. I'm, I'm not one of those people that are like, hey, just do this one one click thing, and and you know everything will be safe and better and stuff like that. Because you know, um, I don't feel that one people learn that way, and two that that uh, it it one recipe doesn't it doesn't apply to to every photo in the same in the same way okay so now in here i am seeing that as i am painting uh, say for example this darker area that as i am painting around it uh, i'm making it surrounded uh, brighter but i'm not um, being too efficient with this. So for this, I'm going to use uh, the different settings where they are stronger. Excuse me, sorry. Where uh, where the effect uh, is put in there is stronger, and 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 where I have to be quicker and and you know work a little bit better. So that will be more like the almost like the pixel level, if you if you will. So I'm I'm taking mental notes on on which parts I need to to come back. Also, I don't know if you're noticing, but I am constantly uh, changing the size of my of my brush um, to to you know to better accommodate. And I'm I, I'm using the the bracket bracket keys. Um, I uh, and oh, I have a, a Wacom tablet. That's one thing I forgot to mention. And because it's live, I can't go back and edit this. But um, Wacom tablets, uh, I I don't mean to be a snob but they are very useful when it comes to this type type of technique I, I don't think i don't think you honestly i don't think you're able to to do this without a wacom tablet and i've seen a lot of photographers when they teach stuff like that something like any anything that i've, that I've seen online when there are people teaching retouching they they i don't know why they shy away of saying this they they shy away of saying yes you need to buy this thing probably they're afraid of sounding like they're selling it um obviously i'm not making any money from um from wacom um if you know me personally you know that i'm i'm 
leaving the industry and I'm, these are probably the last videos that I'm gonna be putting up um, but but yeah people if, if you if you made a name out of people respecting your opinion and valuing what you have to say you also have to be honest when you know when you have to tell people no you can't you can't work always with a mouse and, and you know there are reasons why these products exist and there is just something that a mouse is going to give you that a Wacom tablet I mean that a mouse is is, is not going to give you that a Wacom tablet will um, hopefully you start seeing this a little bit better um, I'm going to continue I might not finish everything all the way oops um, just because I don't want to make this video any any longer than it needs to be um, but let's work with some of the burning that um, and in, in looking for photos to retouch I have already done the dodging and burning on this photo so I have already kind of know where to look for um, I think that's also something that can only come from experience knowing knowing what to where to look which areas need to be worked on and and which areas you m might look like you need to work on but when you zoom out it, it's not that obvious so so you can just get away with not not being um, too picky about certain certain portions of the image um, but now that I reminded uh, one good technique to use when dodging and burning is actually zooming out like as zoomed out as I am right now because it gives you a, an overall view of well, let's say the bigger picture uh, of the entire picture and um, sometimes I do this where I'm just zooming out and going over this all these little places where it's just it's just easier to see how the photo might look because uh, you kind of you're blinding yourself a little bit when you go in too much when you zoom in too much and your purpose is not to do the pixel level uh, technique um, it's it's you know sometimes sometimes that's counterproductive um, so in here I'm actually mixing a little bit of that third technique that what I said that it was about shaping um, it's kind of like bleeding into one another and I actually do all of those in the same set of of, of adjustment layers unless it's something um, that I think that is extremely complicated or is giving me uh, you know um, particular problems then I, I, I use different uh, uh, sets of, of curves layers so I will use one for the you, you know one, one for the regular one for the shaping and one for the pixel level I don't do that very often but most people do and I think that's what most people should do I'm just I, I think again it's mostly laziness so again I'm, I'm gonna kind of like creating using the burn tool to create almost like a like a big net to have a, more emphasis on the face than anything else and um, so I, I jump that that's probably another reason why I do the same technique on the same on the same set of layers is because I jump from one to the other I get bored again this might be this can get a little bit tedious so I jump back and forth from one one technique to the other and I just don't have the time to be switching layers um, okay so in here I'm going to uh, work on these smaller areas and I'm gonna increase my flow uh, I'm probably gonna decrease my opacity to about I don't know 39 30 yeah 36 is fine I'm gonna increase my flow to probably about 8 or 10 and um and yeah start start doing this and this is a lot like like painting with with spray cans um i don't know if you if any of you are familiar with painting with spray cans but basically if you're painting with a spray with a spray can and you want a glossier finish uh you need to paint um uh, uh you need to apply more more paint and to avoid getting you know runs and in, in this case will be patches you need to work faster so you need to uh, um, be closer to the to whatever surface you're, you're painting when you're using spray cans and and at the same time painting it you know making a bolder statement paint, painting putting in more paint but doing it faster so that you don't mess up the paint it's it's pretty much what I'm doing here and um, which I think I'm failing I might have to go back um, yeah, some of these spots are too bright. Uh, so let's paint. Nope. 
um, because we're using a mask I can just paint with black and paint away the spots that I didn't like so yeah that's it that's kind of how how it is um, so I'm gonna change the flow to probably five percent um, so this kind of uh, you know that that was the analogy of using a spray paint and a spray can is that um, when you go into those different techniques you need to be both faster and better um, which apparently I am not and see these I, I think these are the areas where um, getting rid of the color helps you the most um, because their their uh, redness on the skin or something like that might throw you off and and red patches are a different kind of of issue that you might want to fix or not fix and it's not by dodging and burning that's by you know matching colors and stuff like that oops I was going the other way okay so let's see where we are so now you're starting to see a difference now let me turn off these layers where we remove the color so now you start seeing the skin looks a little bit smoother um, than it used to and now I'm going to start fixing probably something like around her eyebrow I'm gonna reduce the opacity of this just to have a better view of the shadows so I'm gonna use burn and I'm gonna make my flow back to two one percent. And if you uh, know how to set up tool presets, you can have like a few presets that you use often that will save uh, your flow and your opacity settings, so that you don't have to be going back and forth manually. So if you look at this side of the screen right here, I have um, three different settings. They're poorly named. Um, um, carving is what I have for the regular, um, for the what I what I call the regular um, dodging and burning, and then detail is what I have for what I was just doing, and then um, DMB eyes. It's a little bit stronger. It, that's for enhancing the eyes, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit. So again, this is not just for fixing what we would call errors or imperfections. This is also for enhancing. So right now I am enhancing a little bit of the of the eyebrow here and I forgot that I remo I went back to my 1% flow but I didn't go back to my 50% opacity and that's why I was working too slow so you will you will notice it um, if you messed up your numbers and, and if you feel that uh, you're working and the effects is being applied too soon and you're like oh no my god I'm making it worse uh, just uh, change them to something that will work slower lower the opacity lower the flow um, if you feel like as soon as you press it uh, that it goes way too quickly then you probably should change the flow to a little bit something a little bit lower if you feel like um, you're you're having to constantly lift off the pen because even though it's building up you know it, it stops the effect it stops and then you have to build up and up and up and down uh, with the pen then you should probably change your uh, opacity and if you feel that uh, when you press it uh, uh, it's on the right setting that you don't feel like it's building up immediately but then very quickly after a few strokes you, um, you know you're going you're starting to go over then make the opacity lower so uh, you th those are like I don't know I don't want to call it common sense I hate using that word um, but those are just um, I don't know uh, wires in your brain that are going to um, you know that are, you're going to get better at, at identifying you know making that putting that on, on the back of your of your head and you know maybe not even think about it eventually and you know, not realizing that you're that you're doing that once once you get better on, on, on identifying the problem now I'm, I'm bringing the color just because uh, the contrast is too much on the on the regular on the black and white or I can just uh, remove this one yeah there you go okay so right now I am fixing and not fixing um, any anything lighting related but I am fixing uh, some of the makeup in here uh, let me go back to two or three percent flow 
I went to four, whatever. So I'm gonna make this a little bit darker, filling in the eyeliner or whatever it's called. And this was, uh, this, I shot this last year. Um, I think this was by the end of the photo shoot. So it's normal that, you know, the, the makeup starts to, you know, break up and not be as perfect as it was at the beginning. So this is not to complain about the makeup artists or anything like that in case um, they watch this video. Okay, um, I'm gonna change my settings to the eyes. So in here in the eyes, I have 36% opacity and 12% flow. And I am going to show you how to enhance the eyes a little bit. Oh, the first thing I do is just make the catch lights brighter. So I'm going back to my dodge layer. I'm gonna make this catch lights a little bit brighter. That already enhances the eyes. All right. Um, some things that I see that uh, when people try to make the eyes brighter or, or to make them pop more, um, I see the mistake of making the entire um, eyeball or the iris or whatever that's called brighter. That's not really how it works in the natural world. Um, you make uh, the brighter the area that is opposite to the highlight. So the highlight, um, the catch light, I mean. So the catch light is right here, it's right here, it's pointing down. So this will be the area that I will be focusing more on making brighter. And if the catch light were right here, then I will make this area brighter, you know, and so on. You get the point. Um, and the flow might be too high. Let's, yeah. Oh, damn it. Um, there's one way of, of um, changing the flow and the opacity, and that's with shortcuts. I think I have it on my other video, but instead of, you know, wasting time trying to move the slider here a little bit and just press shift and the number that you want and that will be the number um so for example shift one five that's flow 15 and without pressing shift you just press uh, one five and that's the opacity so let's go back to 35 percent opacity and let's make um nine percent flow so shift zero nine anyways that's a, a quick tip and let's start making this part of the eyes a little bit brighter. And I, I'm not sure if you're noticing that you, uh, in, on real time, you can't really tell a lot. Um, you, you can't really tell too much uh, what I'm doing. It's only until I, you know, either zoom out or I, um, or I turn the layers on and off to really see the effect. And I am again brightening the white parts of the of the eye. I don't brighten everything the same. I actually don't even touch these the extreme corners because the eye is is a sphere, and and a sphere is gonna be brighter on the area where the where it's directly in front of the light source. So I'm probably gonna lighten this a little bit, and probably this a little bit. And that's it. And um, let me go back to the eyes here. And another thing that I do is uh, this inner part of the eyelid where there is or there should not be makeup. Um, that is also opposed to the highlight. I make it brighter and I go quite a ways. So I'm going to make I'm going to change the opacity a lot. I usually change this to 88% of this point. So I'm making this brighter, just this inner part. It, it, it makes the eye pop um, quite effectively. I'm gonna burn this a little bit more. 
I'm gonna go back to dodge. Um, also, the hardness of the of the brush, I I, I keep it as as um, as soft as I can. Right now, I'm gonna make it harder because I'm gonna create like this specific streaks of light on the on the eyes. Um, did you see it to just to add texture? Um, but that's that's the only reason. And I probably went too far. So I'm just imitating these small texture things to make it look uh, more realistic. Okay, so this is pretty much it. Um, how to dodge and burn using the curves adjustment layer and their mask to do it. Um, let me see if I can do... Oh, let me do some of the pixel level dodging and burning just so that you get an idea of what it is and how it works um, it's pretty freaking tedious um, I don't do this to 90% of my photos and to the photos that I do it I don't do it to 90% of the image so I am back to probably and this is probably gonna be somewhere um, the opacity might stay at 40 or the flow let's see if at 5% it, it works and again this is going to be for this image it might be different for your images but just know that I do change these settings um, and I do make them a little bit harsher and the reason why is because I want to stay in this area as little time as possible um, because as soon because these are really small areas and as soon as I'm starting to spend too much time on them I start retouching or I start um, adding the effect to the surrounding areas and just making the problem worse so, or, or making the problem the opposite way where it, where, it, where instead of a, of a light of, of, of a line of shadow is now a line of, of a bright area you know and that defeats the whole purpose. So essentially this is how you this is how you do it. Um just going real close. Um I was gonna say real slow but not really. And uh but real patient. That's that's the thing. Um being very patient. Uh um I think I do have some time to show you the other technique, the other way of doing the dodging and burning layers. Um, and if you were on the ASMP meeting last year, I didn't get to show you this other technique. Um, and the reason why I like this one better, even though the other one also has its advantages, is that we are using a mask and it's easier, at least as far as I can tell, it's easier to go back and undo mistakes that you make with this, um, with the curves. Oh, way of doing the dodging and burning so that's what i was thinking of when i'm when i'm doing this you know pixel level thing um that if, if you mess something up just go to the curb and fix it and you know undo it uh, so if you see we made the skin a little bit softer uh, i could spend more time but then you already get the point and uh, we also went in and made some of these uh, tiny wrinkles uh, less uh, apparent and we also fix some of these, you know, these things in the makeup and stuff like that, and um, and we enhance some of the highlights, some of the shadows, uh, using essentially the same concept of using light to manipulate how a three-dimensional um, world is captured by a two-dimensional medium. Now. Um, since we're already here and I have some time, 
let me show you how it's done through what is called a soft light layer. Um, so instead of having two different layers, one for dodging and one for burning, we do we create an empty soft light layer. So create layer, new layer. Um, you can name it DMB, whatever. And mode, we are going to make it in the soft light mode. And we're going to fill it with soft light neutral color. That's why I created a new layer using the command and not using the panel. I mean, using the menu tool as opposed to the panel um, in here below. And I was moving my hands as though you can't see me. Anyways, uh, so now we have a dodging and burning layer. And this layer doesn't do anything because it's on soft light and it's on 50% gray. And anything 50% gray on a soft light is not going to show. But but um, if we go back to our default colors on our brush tool, we have black and white. And now this is when in one layer, if we paint with black, we're going to darken the image. And if we paint with white, we're going to make the image brighter. So this is the same thing, the same type of mentality, you know, have a soft brush, um, do it at, at your own pace. The, flow and the opacity settings, all those things remain the same. Uh, it's just that we're working on and maybe removing the color will help. Uh, but the only thing, the only different thing is that we're going to be, um, is that we're going to be making these changes on one, on, on one layer as opposed to on many different layers. And let me create another black and white to get rid of that one. Okay. Um, so the same techniques apply, the same mentality. The difference is that instead of switching uh, layers to be um, dodging or, or burning, you're going to do, do it by switching the colors. And you do that by pressing X, you send black to the foreground or white to the foreground and then pressing it again and you switch them. And if you're not using black and white, if you had other colors, a quick way of, let's, so let's say for example, I had red and black, um, press D, it will go back to the default and then you can press X and it will go back and forth. And you use black to paint the, uh, to do the burning and you use white to do the, um, to do the dodging. So the advantages of this technique um, is that you are only using one layer um, so you m it might be, I was talking about me being lazy, this might be even even faster in that in that sense. Um, another advantage is that sometimes you're gonna run into some issues when you are changing the um, opacity, uh, not the opacity, when you're changing the lightness and the shadows and you're doing to a greater degree in a photograph. Um, if you have watched my video on how to colorize photos, you know that I talk about how uh, light and, and, and color intensity uh, vary depending on the shadow and the light um, areas. Um, those areas tend to be either more saturated or less saturated. And when we start, uh, when you when you start adding a more drastic changes, uh, in this case when with dodging and burning, um, it, you're gonna see a, a difference in color. And what this layer allows you to do is to paint not only with black and white, but with, to paint with color. So you can sample a, a, a color of the skin, a brighter color of the skin, and you will be dodging with that color as opposed to black or white. Uh, um, and, and that sometimes it helps with those issues. Um, I, when I have color issues, I just fix them on a different layer using the technique that I use. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that this technique also exists. And I think that's pretty much it. I probably ramble for too long. Um, but like I said, I am leaving the industry and I don't feel like editing these videos and doing it all scripted and prepared. Uh, I just probably, I just turned on the microphone and just started going without a script or anything. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. Thank you.